Hello, welcome everybody. Welcome to Trend Talks. And today I have the pleasure to talk with Amanda Bybee. She is based in Colorado, USA, and she is the CEO of Amicus O&M Cooperative, a network of independent solar companies throughout the US to provide operation and maintenance services for geographically distributed solar PV portfolios. Amanda has been working in the renewable energy since 2003. She is also nowadays still a supervisionary committee member of the Clean Energy Credit Union and previously worked and was vice president and co-owner of Namaste Solar. Welcome, Amanda. Thank you, Edwin. Uh, Amanda, if we jump into my first question, what do you uh, see as an outlook for the solar industry in the US? And, and do you see any impact of the change in the office in Washington? Uh, yes, I see a huge impact in the change of leadership in Washington. One of the things that I have been really struck by since President Biden's taken office is that he is extending the influence of his policymaking in all areas of the government to address the impacts of climate crisis. And I think that is such a shift from what we've seen over the last four years. And it's what's exciting to me is that clearly I think that bodes well for the solar industry and for all renewables, but it it also brings into play a lot of topics around things like the just transition. So for workers coming out of the fossil fuel industry where coal plant plants are closing and they need to be trained into new jobs, there's, there's a whole emphasis on that as well, which I find really exciting. And so I, I would expect to see a lot of changes, uh, a lot more money being freed up for training and workforce development, for ongoing um, development of new new technologies through this. Uh, um, and so I, I, I'm really excited to see what's coming and the faster it can get here, the better off we'll be. Do you expect a boom in project development in the US for 2021? I do, um, especially as long as the investment tax credit is extended, we are going to see more companies trying to take advantage of that. And you know, there's that's one of, um, the industry's favorite debates right now is what will happen with the federal investment tax credit. My understanding is that it's currently been extended at 26% for the next two years. There's some speculation that that extension could last longer or that it could even be a return to 30%. My personal preference on that question would be for it to stay at 26% ongoing. I do think that it's, there's pros and cons to ever increasing an incentive in terms of what that does to the psychology of consumers. I think that the tax credit has been an incredibly effective policy over the last 13 years um, yeah. since it was enacted at leveraging private dollars and public dollars and getting a lot more institutional investors familiar with the ins and outs of renewable energy investing. And so the tax credit has brought into play huge names that have helped solar and wind and other renewables become more mainstream. So I think it's a really good policy for them to extend. And my money is that we will see it extended. That seems like a very uh, yeah, upbeat outlook. Um, what does it mean in terms of O&M services, you know, you're specializing an expert on that uh, topic, right? Uh, are there any particular trends that you're seeing in the market? There are. Um, you know, the one that's been on my mind since the beginning of the year is consolidation. I feel like yeah. we've seen a number of announcements of companies uh, choosing to merge or be acquired both on the provider side and on the asset owner side. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that's an interesting trend to keep an eye on, particularly to see what impact that will have on pricing and the pricing trends that we've seen over the last few years, as well as just general market share being gobbled up. So that's yeah. one that I expect to have uh, to pay attention to over the, the rest of 2021. And, and how does that uh, compare to your cooperative? Because that is in a way also a consolidation of power, right? Of O&M power. The way that the cooperative functions, we actually go to great lengths to maintain the independence of each of our member companies. So when some, a client approaches me and says, hey, I have sites in you know, North Carolina, who could I call there for O&M services? I steer them toward the member company or companies in that given area and make that introduction. But the cooperative itself is not trying to act as a super company over those 25. Rather, we're here to support those companies as they grow their portfolios and grow their services. 
And so my, my function in that is, is mostly matchmaking. So I wouldn't couch us as a conglomerate because that's not how we're structured actually. But are you facing more competition then of these consolidating O&M companies? Because that's happening also in that industry, right? It is for definitely. I, it remains to be seen. I also feel like having watched a number of consolidation rounds happen, not just in the solar industry, but in other industries worldwide, takes a little time for a company that does a big roll up like that to get its system fully in place and integrated. And I, I think that we've seen lots of examples of that. So we haven't started encountering that altogether. It's also quite possible that we're playing in different sandboxes, you know, and I, I think that our member companies have a pretty strong emphasis on the DG space, which for big consolidated companies oftentimes isn't as interesting as the large utility scale projects. No. So we may not um, end up running into each other all that much, although it remains to be seen. It's still pretty new. Are there some other remarkable trends that you're that you're seeing in the O&M space that you can share with us? Speaking just mostly from my corner of the industry and, and on behalf of our member companies, one of the issues that we see that spans coast to coast is workforce shortages. We are in a fortunate place where the available market grows every year as more and more solar gets installed. So the need for qualified and competent O&M technicians continues to grow. And there's not currently a great comprehensive publicly available training program to put an O&M technician through. You know, and in a lot of cases, you have installers that come over from the EPC side of the business. Maybe they have some familiarity from the installation side that they can translate into operations and maintenance work. But that's one big initiative of the cooperative this year is to develop a more intensive training program that our folks can access. And also to ensure that we're extending access to that training program to the industry efforts to diversify. You know, I spoke a moment ago about a just transition and I really see so much opportunity to use these programs to help open doors to new members of our industry that haven't been as well represented in the past. So, and then the other one that I'll, I'll just mention on behalf of our member companies is that, you know, we've seen as in all aspects of the industry, an ongoing downward price trend, which some of that is supported by a shift toward more and more remote work, remote diagnostics, remote resets, you know, using aerial flyovers in lieu of IV curve tracing, you know, changes to scopes of work, which all really support a lower price point for O&M services. However, I also do think that some of that competition has falsely deflated prices. And so I, I would hope to see that stabilize a little bit. And one of the other things that the cooperative does to try to help our member companies still be profitable, even in a declining price market, is leveraging those technologies more effectively, coming to understand them and integrate them into their workflows and processes. Uh, still a lot of work to do. Maybe you have one final tip for the asset owners to share with us, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that are exploring the O&M uh, services area. My number one appeal to developers even, in many cases you have developers and owners in the same house, is to think hard and to think critically about the longevity of the systems and the materials that you're choosing. We've had such an emphasis over the last 15 years of driving down the upfront cost of solar, which has been an important emphasis. You know, without that, solar couldn't have become mainstream, which I think we're kind of still in early stages, but we're, we're verging on becoming mainstream. That's fantastic. We need that for the planet. And I think a lot of the choices that we've made to drive down that upfront cost may come at the expense of longevity. And I would really hate to see our industry adopt a disposable mentality toward this amazing technology, especially when we're not really prepared to recycle them responsibly. And so that's the other aspect of, of my passion is ensuring that our industry thinks through the entire life cycle, plans for longevity, makes decisions that ensure that our materials will last 25 plus years in the field, and then has a responsible way to be processed at the end of their life. And I think that because we have been so laser focused on upfront costs and development, we haven't paid as much attention to the full life cycle. And I think that's going to be very important for our industry as we continue to move farther into the mainstream is that we think comprehensively about the life cycle and all of the considerations that we need to put in place. Well, with this very important message, um, I would like to thank you very much for this interview.